Ivan Dilip Thakur, editor of Education News. Good morning, I'm Sumia Yasmin, managing editor. February is the budget month for presentation of the union budget. Uh, we haven't covered uh, the union budget in this issue. That will happen next month and its impact on education. But in the meanwhile, we brought out an interesting story on the imminent and continuing liberalization of Indian education. Yes. And particularly letting in foreign and other people from around the world to participate in India's education growth and development. Yes. So what do you think of this uh, particular issue? Are you happy with it? Yes, I think it's a, a information packed and I think in, in some ways it's groundbreaking, especially our cover story, uh, Dilip, where we talk about does in, is Indian education, you know, having a 1991 inflection moment in terms of liberalization and deregulation? Uh, we'll tell our viewers a little later about our cover story. Also, a special report is very interesting. It's on uh, India's great SEL, social and emotional learning skills deficit. Uh, we've uh, reported on some, again, groundbreaking uh, uh, research study which uh, says how this important area has been neglected and of course there are usual sec sec sections where we have interesting education news, editorial and uh, expert comment, expert comment, teacher book to reviews, teacher, yes. book reviews. Yes. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, filled with uh, insightful uh, comment and uh, education news stories. So let's go through yes. bit by bit yes. for the... In the editorial section, I think we've done some two great editorials, yes. Philip, one on the uh, basic structure of the con constitution, yes. why it's inviolate, and uh, uh, the second one is on the pandemic lessons for education. Important lessons on the pandemic. It's important perhaps to tell our readers that because we call education world doesn't mean we talk only about education. We are a very Catholic magazine, broad based magazine, and our editorial this time is on why the basic structure of the constitution must remain inviolate. This was recently adjudicated in the Supreme Court. So we've given, uh, in fact, it's pending in the Supreme Court, and therefore we've given our point of view. Uh, let's move on to uh, education news. news yes. yes, in education news, again, some very uh, uh, topical news items we've covered. I think the first one is from Delhi, where we talk about. Uh, it's uh, related to our cover story. Yes, so about the UGC yes. uh, allowing foreign university campuses to set up in India yes. and how you know the usual uh, criticism and noises are this matter has been pending in fact yes. for uh, decades and uh, we've reported now finally it's happened. So it's a very interesting story. And in uh, uh, from West Bengal uh, we have reported on the ACER report is the 2022 report the annual status of yes brought out by the Pratham Education Foundation how learning outcomes uh, in West Bengal in fact have become from bad to worse severely hit by the pandemic in fact West Bengal had the longest, longest education lockdown, lockdown uh, during the pandemic of all states in India yes. and how this has severely impacted and how yes and our essence of our story is with the Madra look that's mm. the influential culture refined middle class and we all are getting pretty fed up with uh, uh, mismanagement 34 years yes. of uh, communist rule uh, ruining the education system and now uh, not, not much more of the done. same more of the same yes indeed and karnataka again we talk about the acer report uh, karnataka used to be an educationally strong state yes. but you know uh, going downhill and in fact uh, the uh, learning slide the ACER report says that has been more than 10 percentage points. Quite dramatic, in yes. Karnataka. Quite and dramatic. This so is like, a, a, we find it a bit ironic, our, our correspondent might be ironic, because uh, Karnataka and Bangalore in particular is a hub of the high tech, high intelligence IT industry. Yes. And in Tamil Nadu, we've got a story of a conflict between center and state, an old story, but according to our, our correspondent writing from uh, Chennai. This uh, it has its roots in the old uh, antagonism about imposing uh, Hindi. Yeah. On, uh, so the news the there in Tamil Nadu is that the state government, the DMK led state government, is formulating its own state education yes. policy. It doesn't want to implement NEP 2020, so it's coming up with its own SCP 2023. Yes, and that's a potential 
point yes. of conflict. Yes. Then, of course, we have our education news notes and, and, uh, notes and for, which gives you a roundup from around the country what's happening. Mm. But these are soft stories. Mm. Okay. Uh, and expert comment is a very uh, interesting this time. Uh, it's titled a, Fro a Foreign Branded Schools Cost Benefits. It's uh, written by Roshan Gandhi. Uh, Oxford educated uh, yeah. you know, technology mentor. London based consultant, yes. yes. Who's uh, talking about, you know, uh, this is a good thing. He says the, foreign no, schools. The, imminent, the whole years. story is built on the imminent entry of Harrow School, where Pandit Nehru, Winston Churchill, and several British prime ministers. So it was set up in the year 15 something, 1580. Uh, ancient school establishing a campus right here in Bangalore, yes. uh, near the airport. And uh, it's going to charge fees of 16 lakhs per year. So now Roshan's written a column saying, what are the cost benefits of uh, allowing this yes. ancient, of course, liberalization is good. And nobody, I mean, least of all education world is going to say this is not a good development, but it has its upside and its downside, which are discussed. Of course, institution profile, we have again, you know, a newly emergent, yes, newly emergent school, Tatwa school in Hyderabad and a foreign university profile and uh, young achievers, uh, two bright sparks, one is a chess champion and the um, other one is a swimming mermaid. Yes, a swimming mermaid, both are set to take uh, hopefully Indian uh, sports uh, global. To a new level, yes. yes. And our cover story, uh, Dilip. Which is the main, uh, yes, which is the main, main item on the agenda this time. Yes, it's a, uh, you, it's a very, very well laid out story. For, Compliments to Sumya for that. And, uh, so the question here we are asking is, is Indian education having a 1991 liberalization inflection point? Yes. Is it the liberalization moment for Indian education? Which in 1991, the Indian economy was liberalized and our rate of growth doubled, yeah. annual rate of GDP doubled, 400 million people lifted out of poverty. But Indian education remained tightly shut down by uh, Neta Babu license permit quota Raj. Uh, hundreds of permissions. You weren't allowed to do this, you're not allowed to do that. The Supreme Court had, of course, in some important judgments, liberalized the, the, the environment for Indian educationists, particularly private education, foreign educationists, but it wasn't sufficient. Now, a recent, some recent diktats allowing foreign schools, foreign universities, into India may be changing the picture and we may be at an at a inflection point, as you rightly say, when Indian education can become a global standard. Yes, we are saying, uh, saying this is a good thing. We believe that, you know, that uh, Indian education will benefit from incorporation of uh, global best education practices. Yes. And we've given some interesting tables yes, and we, we say, we showing say that which are the companies coming, in coming India, into India, which are the new schools that have been started. Yes. And then, of course, uh, experts commenting on for and against yes. uh, the, no, the liberalization of yes. Indian Yes, overall education. education world is in favor of it. We say that, you know, uh, a rising tide will lift all boats. Indeed. Right? And as Mahatma Gandhi said, keep your windows open. So that all kinds of uh, air and environment coming through the windows. Centa is a, the, the, what's the name of the company? It's uh, the Bangalore Center for Teacher Accreditation uh, Private Limited, that's Centa. It's a, it's a company that tests teachers for schools to assess the skills and uh, the learning of teachers. And they've given a whole list of, uh, they have an annual TPO. Yes, so British Education World is supported as a partner. As a partner. So we have some brief interviews with the TPO winners. Yes. And of course, Education uh, International News, where we herald the appointment of Harvard University's, the blue chip Harvard University, USA's first woman black president, a black woman president. And uh, it's, it's a momentous event in, uh, in uh, American. Uh, History, the education history of America, and several other stories, including one on the sale of edX, which was set up as an international Harvard. learning platform by Harvard and MIT, and uh, it's been sold to a private company. Yeah. So what are the, and, uh, the American University of 
Beirut, Beirut, which has suffered a lot during the the war, and then following which uh, yes. there was a huge blast in you know, the Beirut yeah, uh, very, University. Uh, port, yeah, yes. port. How it's trying to rebuild itself. Yes. So very interesting education news. Uh, teacher to teacher also this time is uh, written by a, a excellent uh, higher education yes, leader. Just, yes. Dr. Rajesh Khanna has written on how pandemic learning loss myths and realities. Yes. So some very interesting, uh, you know, yes. uh, suggestions he throws up, you know, is the pandemic loss is not the same for not, every not student. As, yeah, and it's not as great as people make yes. up. Yes. And Professor Khanna is a, is a vice chancellor of NIIT University, one of the top 10 mm -hmm. ranked private universities mm -hmm. in India. Uh, the man who speaks with authority. Yes. And then special course, report is very, 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 I think, uh, relevant uh, to the, especially in the post-pandemic post world in which uh, Indian uh, schools um, are facing with, I think, already a challenge of uh, lack of social and emotional learning. So we highlighted a study uh, conducted by the Center for Science of Student Learning. It's a Delhi-based organization. This was a pan-India study conducted. Most importantly conducted, the survey was held pre-pandemic. Mm. So uh, this could be much worse. Much, the situation could, could be, be much, much worse. worse now. But so, it indicates that the story, the essence of the story is that unless children have social and emotional, emotional learning, learning, their academic learning will be suboptimal. Yes. For the first time, this study has proved that when children have better social and emotional learning, their academic grades improve. So there's a direct correlation there, yes. of course, from the obvious benefits of that, that, you know, uh, you need to build a caring, sensitive and productive citizens. No, and teachers, there's a very important uh, onus on teachers to actually teach the, uh, the, the development of the acquisition of uh, social and emotional yes. learning skills. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it needs to be taught just like a subject. Yeah. And you need to read this. I highly recommend all edu educators to read this and especially uh, study our graphs. Some, uh, you know, very revealing and disturbing uh, revelations. Like, say, for example, I was uh, personally quite disturbed when I read that, you know, that 70% uh, of students in private schools reported that they face, uh, you know, abuse from peers and teachers. Yes, and there are also important uh, uh, graphics showing that what do children think about river pollution, citizenship, uh, um, gender women's rights, women's rights and it's, it's you know their dark. attitudes towards caste, segregation and exclusion. It's quite That's shocking. shocking. Yeah, shocking. Quite shocking. You know, it's, that is indeed, in fact, it's yeah. an immediate call for action for educators indeed. to uh, include SEL in their curriculums. Yes, indeed. Time to start teaching social emotional learning skills uh, and integrate it into school curriculums. Indeed. And in books, we have a book on Churchill, a recently published book. Churchill is a, is a hate figure, a love-hate figure in India. A lot of people don't like him and associate him with the 1943 Bengal famine. And of course, he was quite racist even by the time of his day in his attitude towards Indians. Indians. And, uh, well, yeah. The second book review is more, I think, uh, relevant uh, to our readership. It talks about the pernicious casteism in Indian academia especially in Indian universities. Casteism is very prevalent in higher education, education. institutions. And it's, it's quite shocking. Quite yeah. shocking. In fact, it's an expose of uh, you know, casteism in our Indian higher education system. Oh, it's, it's indicative of the deep penetration of caste prejudice, which is not eradicated even in higher uh, institutions of higher learning. Yeah, and in the 21st uh, century. Yes, which is quite uh, amazing. Yes. And of course, our postscript section as our usual. Our most read uh, page. And, uh, most read page where we talk about uh, you know a good future for tourism coming up then we also talk about the sino uh, china india paradox uh, we are like almost at war with each other but our trade between exports and imports within china is growing and, but with india at a disadvantage because the deficit has gone to trade deficit between the two countries has gone to over 100 billion dollars and then of course uh, we lament the fate of our fellow citizens in that benighted state of Bihar, Bihar where a succession of prime minister, uh, chief ministers uh, who seem to have very little uh, intelligence and who recently imposed prohibition on this, liquor prohibition on the state, the result of which 
So many people are Lost dying, their lives. dying, and so much crime, corruption in a state which is already uh, heavily groaning under the weight of corruption for past several decades. Several decades. Yeah. It's a sad story. Yeah. Well, so that's, that's it. The fab issue of education world. It's if you if you I think you, you won't regret it. it. Yes, and <laughs> I think if you re, uh, read it from A to Z, you'll become one of the most knowledgeable people about Indian education. Yes, you don't have to read the previous issues. Yes. It's good enough. And of course, before we go in parents' world, we've got a again uh, I think a very relevant topical issue uh, where we saying that why it's important for children to get a good night's rest every night, mm -hmm. the importance of sleep. Yes. And in today's you know. A disruptive uh, tech uh, tech obsessed world, children you know, are literally losing sleep. And because they're so busy with their mobile phones, yes, uh, mobile late phones, into nights, uh, or television activities, television, social media. Uh, sleep, sleep is very important. It's deeply connected with uh, you know uh, falling school grades, uh, with health, physical health, and uh, also emotional stability. Yes. So we uh, we are advising parents pay a lot of attention to ensure. That your children get good nights rest every, every night. night. Well, Thank that's you. all. Thank you Thank very much. You.